You see, I'm a believer first. I'm a believer who happens to say because it lines up with my faith. One thing that sets the God of the Bible apart from every so-called God on this planet is the fact that he a hundred percent, a hundred fifty percent, like every, you can't even put a number on it, will stand alone. He says he is the only living God and he is, and he's proved it and he proves it more and more over and over. He continuously proves himself. He says in his word that if we seek him with our whole heart, diligently, we will find him and see him. Before you know it, you will look at every circumstance, everything and find the glory of God. And it is amazing. I am in awe of him. I am in awe of him and the way that he does and the way that he directs my path, the way that he, he makes a crooked path straight for me, personally for me. He's a personal God. Like the way that he does for me, it's like he had me completely in his mind. It wasn't like, oh, you kind of fit the bill. No, this was you. This was for you, Sharon Joy. I know you, baby girl. You my baby girl. And I did this for you. That's how God is. That's how God does. And he is the only living God. Every so often in prayer, you simply have to sit there and thank him for being alive. Thank him for hearing you. Thank him for seeing you. He is not dead. Christ resurrected. As much as I thank and praise him for dying on the cross for my sins, it's that resurrection power. It's that resurrection power that changes everything for me personally. Like, like that's something that captivates me. Like, you're in me, God. You're alive, God. You see me, God. You hear me, God. I can talk to you and you speak back to me when you guide me in scripture and show me that you are, are doing these things and speaking. Like, y'all, do not try to live this life without God, without the Bible, without Jesus without his word because his word does not return to him void and it won't return to you void either i kid you not there are times in my life where i've just been like thinking i was all alone and that the world had forgotten about me god had forgotten about me and that like you know is a whole thing but and it's like the spirit of rejection and the reality of rejection isn't easy and it doesn't mean that like you just give your life to Christ and never get rejected again no sometimes that is the catalyst for your rejection <laughs> but um he heals you and you learn to love those who don't love you in return those who seem unlovable as much as you love people who love you back and everything you you learn to love those who've hurt you in Christ and then you see how he's loved you the entire time he is alive and well and I want to emphasize that because I think at times like we got people out here and this is not to make anybody feel bad for their beliefs but I do want people to get to a point where they're like what am I believing in am I sure that it's God I'm serving am I sure that it's God that I am believing in am I a reflection of this thing that I am believing in or is this thing a creation because God wants you to serve and worship and love him who is the creator I'm sorry he's within us like for example i just took a test a standardized test you can't wear jewelry and i was so grateful at the fact that though i wear this cross that i love it's a cross that's like formed out of a rose because he's the rose of sharon and that's where i got my name but this actually came from anyway so anyway so um when i look at how he um, 
dwells within me, it makes me so grateful that I don't have to carry a rock with me. I don't have to make sure I'm wearing a necklace or do some type of potion or spell or whatever (laughs) to accomplish anything because his yes is yes and his no is no. And I trust him. I trust his authority. I trust his guidance. I trust his love for me. I trust him because he is good and holy and righteous and just, my God, I love him so much. And I pray that we all learn to love him the way that he deserves to be loved because he first loved us so, so much. He continuously loves us in spite of our wrongdoing, in spite of our wicked ways, in spite of us never taking the time to acknowledge acknowledge him. He loves us and does for us. There's this moment that we see in the New Testament, somewhere I believe in Matthew, where Jesus heals 10 lepers. He heals 10 lepers, changes their life forever. And only one comes back to say thank you. Only one comes back to say thank you. You are Lord. And he says, where are the other ones who were healed? Weren't there 10 of you? Go, your faith has made you whole. You can be healed and still not be whole. I got to be one of them ones. You got to be one of them ones. We got to be one of them ones as believers first. Who turn around and say thank you. Who acknowledge him that he may direct our paths. He's worthy of it all. He deserves an undignified praise. There's no words that can express my gratitude. There's no time spent that can express my gratitude. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with him. Allow for him and his spirit to satiate you, to satisfy your soul, and to saturate you. Be made whole. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. He is alive. He is well. He sees all, hears all. And he is with you. And there is nothing that is too hard for him. But he needs your yes. He needs your agreement. Because he's a gentleman. He is the truth. He does not deceive you. And as I, as I was surrendering my life to God, I knew that I was surrendering to persecution. I was surrendering to rejection. I was surrendering to not always being politically correct or not always having the popular opinion because I'll stand on that stable truth. Even if I got to stand alone by Jesus, it's going to be me and Jesus. It's me and you, Jesus. I'm just kidding. But yeah, he hears you. He sees you. Your earnest cry. And he will show you and reveal himself to you in a sincere and personal way. I pray that this blesses somebody.